How much is your monthly power bill? It could be down to just pennies in the future, the distant future, thanks to what might be a historic breakthrough in the field of nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun. For the first time in history, scientists in California have reportedly produced more energy in a fusion reaction than the energy that was consumed in starting the reaction. This could be a crucial step forward as we seek new clean sources of energy. But fusion power has remained elusive for decades. For more on this potential breakthrough, I'm joined by Professor Anna Erickson. She teaches nuclear and radiological engineering at the Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering at Georgia Tech. Thank you so much for joining us, Anna. For those of us without, I can't even make this joke, I know so little about what science is required for us for it. So just tell us what exactly is fusion? Well, thank you for inviting me to the show. Uh, this is truly an exciting time to talk about energy and we are all anticipating tomorrow's announcement. But what is fusion and why is it so difficult? Uh, fission and fusion were discovered together around 1930s, but we have fission reactors all over the country, all over the world. Fusion, we are still working on it, right? So imagine trying to bring two positively charged particles together. They try to repel each other. They don't want to fuse. So what do we need to do to make that happen? Well, sun is one great example of having the fusion happen. We need great temperatures and great pressures that are really difficult to achieve on Earth. And I'm happy to tell you more about that. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. So this, so you see this as a big breakthrough um, in the, because there is a, um, sometimes breakthroughs are overhyped a little bit, but, but you see this as a, as a major development, what may be announced tomorrow. Well, it has never been shown before. So far, we have to pump a lot of energy to get almost nothing out during the fusion reactions. So if we in fact can demonstrate that we are breaking through and we're gaining enough energy out of this reaction, then this is a huge, huge step forward. And how did they achieve this breakthrough? Was it an intellectual uh, achievement where they found a new way to do it or was it just they put a lot more power behind it? Well, you know, I don't want to spoil the announcement, so I can only speculate, right? Um, but technologically, this is an incredibly difficult problem. First of all, the sun is successful at having fusion energy because it can achieve very high temperatures and pressures. To get the same type of condition on Earth, we need 100 million degrees Celsius in temperatures and enormous pressures. So technologically, to begin with, it's difficult. Well, fine, say we have these conditions, now you have to sustain them. How does NIF achieve that? We use giant lasers, in fact, the most powerful laser on Earth, to create enough energy within a very small target. And how that target is designed has a huge impact whether we can achieve fusion or not. The precision that they have to manufacture those targets is down to micron, down to nanometer in some parts. So this is an incredibly difficult problem. And so if this problem appears to have been surmounted at this level, of course, immediately people are racing to a future of bountiful, clean energy. Give us some sense of how far that future is and the nature of the obstacles between this, if it's true, and what might be uh, available in terms of harnessing this energy. It's a great question. Well, let me talk about the benefit first so people have an idea what that means to have fusion. Say you have a few grams of that material, right? The uh, heavy hydrogen and tritium that we use for fusion. Just a few grams, a couple of sunflower seeds. That is enough to sustain a whole household of electricity for your lifetime for 60 years in the United States. So we have plenty of this material. So if we can achieve fusion, it is truly limitless. But let's talk about the boundaries. Now, the problem is that how expensive it is to make this reaction happen to begin with, and now we have to maintain it. And the maintenance of that reaction to make sure it's self-sustaining, that is a big technological problem. So we may see a breakthrough tomorrow, but uh, we're still quite far away from the actual practical fusion power plants. Professor Erickson, thank you so much for being with us. That was extremely helpful. Thank you for having me.